Pipiid Emma. Uh, welcome all of you uh, to this Trading Together online event. Mike Williams said we do in Gunghorid business here at Hacklen Business Cymde Thassol Cymru i Canolfan Cydwyth Rhydol Cymru. I'm Mike Williams, I'm one of the business advisors for the Social Business Wales Programme for the Wales Cooperative Centre. And uh, I will be your host for the next hour or so. Can I just start by uh, inviting those of you who need translation into Welsh. Uh, if you don't speak the language of heaven, there is a facility whereby you can have um, simultaneous translation this morning. And the way to achieve that is if you have a look at the bottom of your screen on the extreme right but one of the grey icons, there is a, a mini globe with the word interpretation in it. If you need to click on that, and then click on the word English, that will uh, allow Kevin, our translator, uh, to have direct access, and he will be translating simultaneously uh, those proportions of the event that are uh, run in Welsh. Would you like to try that now to see, uh, just to confirm that that works and then uh, if heaven is a thing that he did, I can't even well see my pethamin. Nobody's come back to me to complain. So nobody does an all equina that they are among with the other. No one's complained that it's not working. So I can only assume that the simultaneous interpretation is working. Then, can I therefore start this event by introducing my colleague Glenn Bowen? Glenn is the uh, innovation director for the Cooperative Centre, and Glenn will be saying a few words before we uh, get into the formal part of the program. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, diach, Mike. Uh, thank you, Mike, and Diach Nafawr Pawb and Croeso. Welcome to our Trading Together online event. Um, so I am the Director of Enterprise, as has already been said, and I head up the Social Business Wales team. And today's uh, event has been brought to you by my colleagues in Social Business Wales as part of our Tech Fest uh, social good uh, a week uh, long uh, uh, of a, a week uh, of events all going through um, through this week really. Hopefully, lots of you know Social Business Wales, but we provide business support to social enterprises, co-ops, and mutuals across Wales, either for people coming together wanting to start up something new or establish social enterprises looking to grow. And we are part of the Business Wales family. And we're currently funded by Welsh Government and the European Union. Um, and um, so thanks to my colleagues today for organising us and getting us uh, here to this event, uh, particularly to um, Elizabeth and um, Mike Erskine and Mike Williams and Jem and all the, the background team that's helped get us here and organise us today. And obviously, um, thanks to our speakers as well. And it's really important that we're here as SBW as part of Tech Fest. Um, we know in terms of the importance of the digital transformation to all our businesses and in terms of allowing us to reach our customers wherever they are. It's always been important, but obviously in the last 15 months in terms of through COVID and the, the, the speed at which we've had to evolve and even use things like the platform we're using today. It was interesting at a conversation with uh, a friend and, and she found uh, an email from work saying that somebody had said there was this new thing called Zoom that she was going to have to have training on. Uh, it just shows you how far we've travelled in the last 15 months um, and actually how much further we've got to travel in terms of making our businesses more successful using tech to reach our customers uh, in more innovative ways and to, to support our communities and our clients. 
So we've got loads of brilliant speakers today. Um, so uh, again, Diochen Vaud for attending. Hope you really enjoy the next hour. And I'm going to hand uh, back to my colleague, Mike Williams. Diochen Vaud. Diochen, thank you. And shall I put continue? Our Mark? first speaker this morning is Meleri Davis and Lucinda Enston from the Ogwen Partnership. And they will talk to us about uh, the Cadwyn Ogwen programme. There'll be a short film and then uh, some information, some additional information and a subsequent discussion. So I'll hand you over to Meleri and Lucinda. Um, she's going to share my device with me, so I'll turn to Mel and she can give you the story of Cardinal Hi, everyone. I hope that you can hear me. Uh, my Zoom facility just shut down. I think I've got the IT gremlins. How ironic that we are discussing technology and that this last minute it's failed me. I'm Larry and I'm here with Lucinda to discuss Cadre Ogwen, which is one of uh, the Ogwen partnership projects. It's a project that we're indeed very proud of because it's uh, a great example of what we as a social enterprise do, which is to create projects that bring in economic advantages, but also an environmental and cultural benefit as well. We are going to talk about the project, but I'd like to ask Mike if he would be kind enough to share the video, please. Last year, for like for lots of people, it was a really pretty difficult year. Just when we as local businesses were really struggling, when our markets had just sort of collapsed, there was Catherine Ogwen to really pick us up again and to find those connections with the a local community. I work for the Menai Seafood Company. Through Cadwyn Ogwen we sell all of our smoked fish. It's been really good. It's made business so much easier for us. We just thought it'd be amazing to, to be able to give good produce to people who were stuck at home. They could make their own meals and, and make something a bit more interesting that they probably wouldn't usually have the time to make. Just as much as the, as, as the practical help, it was that sort of psychological help. It, it just seemed as if our local community was behind us and helping us out. Tomorrow the process or hipping and Catwin Ockwen and Gahibod and Kadiko highlights and also swimming about an honest. Do not take my brown to the eye, Egal and Marcelli back or or treats. Er suddenly Catwin Ockwen, then he did Danvo and he will live or Gatrevi and if you knock when I don't need the Catu will live in an economy layal. Then he energy hit the bottom, like Catwin Ockwen, I don't need to be here with Catwin Ockwen and Sophie, what are going to lad do it? Dwi'n gobeithio bod o'n parhau oherwydd y byddion eraill mae o'n dŵad. Dwi'n meddwl bod o'n lot, so hwnna ni wedi um, 
Lot of a wall with the cry, Pitha Atra, and the Silk of Lot Claw. I'm an a govel, I don't wish I had a business back in and get here to Mineta to Mobo Hunan Beth, um, Pueris, a Pusig, Igamakir, the Wattle. Have be an economy lay on me and Pusig, the Wattle, the Finagwan, a Pusig Alnivy, a Dunabis and even Happis and Nate, a wife. Thank you, Mike. I'm now on Lucinda's computer. Lucinda, uh, could you could you listen to be made co-host as well, please, in order for her to share? Thank you very much. I hope that you can all see the screen. Okay, so Cadun Ogwen, it's one of the Ogwen partnerships project. For those of you who don't know, Partnerith Ogwen is a social enterprise and we develop regeneration projects in the Bethesda area and the uh, Ogwen area. And the core part of our work is to create economic benefits, social benefits and cultural benefits, uh, and obviously community benefit along with the environmental benefits. So Cadwyn Ogwen essentially is an online platform for the sale of locally produced produce and back in March of last year so prior to lockdown there were some local businesses who were gravely concerned about their capacity to sell their produce locally during the pandemic so they approached us as a social enterprise uh, to discuss these obstacles and challenges and we referred some grants towards the Cadillac project and an online platform was set up as part of uh, a website on Cymru. There are 22 producers uh, who sell via Cadillac and people put their orders in on the Sunday. Uh, the produce then is sent out every Thursday in an electric vehicle. Uh, initially, we uh, started to use uh, the electric vehicle from Gwynedd Rural Innovation. Uh, now we have one from Zipworld and we are about to have a new vehicle, uh, a new Cardinogwen electric van uh, through a Welsh government grant and the CTA. Now, the intention is much more than just profit generation. Yes, it's a platform, it's an online store, that's great. Businesses are able to create some profit for themselves. Uh, and they obviously have financial benefit from that. But the scheme is actually more uh, about the collaborative benefits, getting these businesses to work together as they sell and to communicate with one another. Lucinda, my colleague, will talk a bit more about that uh, collaboration and communication element shortly. We have some newsletters for our customers. Uh, we've got a Facebook account and so forth. Uh, we've just produced some recipe cards that includes Cardinal Gwen ingredients. So it's not just a matter of businesses using it as a silo uh, in an online shop. It's getting these businesses to talk to one another as well, to collaborate, to work together uh, and to create together. And who knows, often they uh, might be producing goods, cakes and so forth jointly together in the future, possibly. And the one thing that I will say uh, before I hand you over to Lucinda is that Cadwyn Ogwen, um, the online outlet is just the one outlet. Our aim is to uh, initially bring forth additional outlets for our producers to sell. Obviously, the online outlet is fantastic, 
but I think that now what we'll be trying to do over the forthcoming few months is to start a pop-up shop on the high street. We have spoken previously about taking uh, stalls to fates and so forth as soon as restrictions lift, that we can take them there in the name of Cardinal Gwen, so to offer new platforms for local businesses. I'm now going to hand you over to Lucinda, who's my colleague. Um, she's been working with us as a community leader um, for the Diffin-Ogwen Grant Foundation, and she's the one who's essentially led Cardin Ogwen this year. Hi, um, I lead on Cardin Ogwen, and as Mel mentioned, we have a website, and there's uh, a large variety uh, of small uh, producers featured on our website, and some of them are family businesses, uh, some um, uh, are mere startups, some are very experienced. And our point of view at Cardinogwen is that we need to support these producers. Since they are all uniquely different, we need to provide a different measure of support for them. For instance, some will need assistance with using the internet. Some will need uh, assistance with taking photographs and uploading. Some will need support with translation and so forth. And that's all interesting because a number of our producers are Welsh learners and are now fully fluent in Welsh. Some of them need uh, a little assistance in that respect. So we do support all those small producers and in doing so we support our local community as well by essentially um, sustaining this service. And one of the things that we do is that we support them in one important aspect, which is the promotion of their goods and wares on social media outlets. And uh, we promote ourselves as Cajun or Gwen and we promote promote them as individuals on uh, on our Facebook groups and in newsletters and so forth. Promotion most certainly is an integral part of this. And moving forward in about a fortnight's time, uh, we'll open a pop-up shop on the high street and it will provide these producers an opportunity to sell their wares and also to promote themselves as producers. We hopefully will give them a space in the shop in order for them uh, to hold taster sessions, uh, to share recipes and so forth, and just to get to know people in the community after a year where there hasn't been much community contact. So we truly look forward to expanding uh, and increasing this level of contact within our community uh, and continuing to support these small producers. Thank you. So I'll just conclude uh, with a few statistics for you. This is not Waitrose or Morrison's or anything else. It, it is a small scheme uh, for the benefit of uh, the communities of the Ogwen area. Uh, but between April 2020 and April 2021, we have uh, sent out over 1,800 orders to the value of £48,000 worth of sale um, conducted through Cardinogwen, and that money has gone back to uh, the smaller business uh, businesses in this valley. That figure does not consider uh, all the salary and the wages uh, that circulates in the area. We also try to measure our environmental impact. As I mentioned, uh, we've been uh, doing all the deliveries in an electric vehicle, and that's the equivalent of some 3,000 miles or so over the course of the year. And that's a carbon saving that's significant um, that obviously contributes to our sustainability and the environmental vision of Partneriath Ogwen. So I'm going to pause there and uh, apologies again for the technical issues and thank you for your patience. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Thank you to Mel and Lucinda. Can I just talk uh, very briefly, I'm sure that there'll be numerous questions uh, following that presentation. It was excellent. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, could you hold on to them uh, until the end of the hour slot, please? Uh, we have some 10 minutes or so that we've allocated for uh, everyone uh, to be able to ask the questions that they want. Uh, and there'll be a fair opportunity for you to be given a complete answer.
thank you very much for inviting me. Um, and I'm just going to check if you could just say yes, if you can actually see my slides. Good, good, right. Um, so um, I founded shopappy.com in 2016. It was an initiative to uh, support digital resilience on our high streets. At that time, I had no idea that there would be a pandemic in our wake. But very much for me, it was uh, I had an emotional connection with where I live in my community. And I felt that we needed it needed to be easier to support the local businesses that I cared about. Uh, now, COVID-19 has accelerated major trends, particularly around localization and personalization, which, of course, our local independent shops can provide. But also it has changed the game for how people uh, shop. So it is across generations now that people are shopping online. One pound in every three is now being spent online. Pre-COVID, that was one pound in every five. But Shopappy's mission, my platform, is not to create a nation of online shoppers. It is very much about trying to get people back into the high street. And I love that presentation just now around uh, the shops and pop up and really getting into the high street because that's absolutely the ethos of uh, what Shopappy uh, wants to do as well. So we're a social purpose business. Yes, we have won awards. We have been around for a long time. We've seen high streets pre-COVID. And uh, one of the phrases that's often bandied about is new normal. Normal wasn't great for our high streets pre-COVID, where we had a, a, you know, a diminishing footfall and footfall without spend. And so um, this will be exacerbated if our businesses don't adapt. So it's really important that we collaborate. Um, also, I, I spend holidays in uh, Gwyneth, and uh, one of our uh, members of the team works, uh, lives there. And we have this kind of dispersed team across the country. But, you know, places like Pafeli have fantastic towns, brilliant market, independent shops. When I holidayed there, there this year, I couldn't spend local because I was shielding. And had that uh, community been online, they would have got our spend. So it's an opportunity. Online marketplaces complement those business and brand values. Accelerated trends include things like personalization, authenticity, localization. So uh, a local online uh, marketplace can really help. So during COVID, uh, Shopappy expanded from our 29 towns we were in at that point to now over 150 towns and cities registered uh, on the platform. So online marketplaces for us, it's about the local community. Businesses are absolutely key in that. And um, it's all about, you know, that human face to technology. So um, I really understand what we have. We've been working with a community of businesses that are either not, not able to resource, not able to spend the time to add things, to do things with their own websites, or, you know, not interested in online. Unfortunately, your customers are online. So we've, we've needed to bridge that gap for a long time. So we're working in Panath. Panath, we're working with a, a fantastic business group. And uh, the, the Panath uh, site has been incredible for the numbers of businesses. I think there's now 53 or 60 now registered on the site. It's a lovely consolidated journey. Now, our mission is to try and get people in town. So we want footfall with intent to spend money. So when the high streets are open, the biggest difference a shop can have is someone in their store. They're more likely to spend more. Of course, you need that online convenience, which is why we also provide click and collect from each shop click and collect from a single collection point and home delivery as people get more vulnerable, you know, as people are vulnerable, as, as the, the variants emerge. But really, we need to focus on behavioural change. Our mission is happy people, happy places, happy planet. And the biggest, most carbon neutral thing people can do is to go in person to a place and shop local. So every town that we work with has a customised landing page. Um, there's, they can add videos and all sorts. Every business has a listing. We deliberately land people into the shop so they can discover them. And our uh, the, the kind of sessions we get are two and a half times global averages in terms of the, the amount of time people are spending looking at their, their shops. Every shop can put their COVID-19 safety information. There's also links to their own websites and so on. But we're not a directory. We are a marketplace. So once uh, you're in a shop, you can look at products, you can search products. We also have what's on, you can book things. You don't have to have any tech experience to be able to use Shopappy. You do need a smartphone and an email, but that's it. And we have a big team that can help you, coach you, support you to uh, go online and, and give you all that assistance. A lot of this requires hand holding. And we're very lucky because we've been in this space for so many years that we have an experienced team that can help. Uh, the biggest thing for me, I'm a social psycholo psychologist by background, is behavioural change. What do we see? We see 91% of people saying 
Shop Happy encourages them to shop local more. We run a big shop local campaign. We've got brand assets designed by Saatchi and Saatchi, um, which are brilliant for people to use, that reinforce, join the dots. If you spend, you know, where you shop matters. We're also partnered with Visa and their massive where you shop matters campaign. So all this is about changing behavior so people shop local more. And uh, we see, you know, we see the results from how people interact with the site, but also with shops in person. So digital helps discovery. Um, it's saving time at the supermarket. Uh, people are discovering great quality. Once you've bought a local produced fi fish or food, you never go back to supermarkets. Um, I've, we've discovered, you know, people saying they've discovered places that they didn't know existed. Uh, they have, they never had time to wander. There's been a lot of rediscovery during COVID if we spent more time closer to home. But this is a really you know, important part that when you're sitting on the sofa, you can browse your local area. And mental well-being, it's really important people can stay connected like that. Of course, digital influence is football. We've seen the results ourselves. This is one of our stores, uh, pre-COVID, 188 new paying customers just three weeks after launch. So, uh, but the most important thing is it's spending customers. They've gone in with an intention to spend and gosh, we've needed that in our high streets for some time. We haven't needed people just to go into a high street to have a coffee. We need them to buy things. It enhances experience. So we've seen people selling online classes, bookings. There's a lovely art shop. His classes were eight people at a time when he had a physical premises. During COVID, his classes are 40 a time. He's now had his most successful trading year. I don't think many shops could say that during COVID, especially non-food shops. So, um, and it's inclusivity. We have seen people that were obviously vulnerable during COVID, but people that haven't been able to access the high street for all sorts of reasons. So we've implemented an accessibility module on our site, artificial intelligence, which basically enables people to see the site to whatever accessibility needs there are. And that is really valuable to our local economy. The Purple Pound has a, a significant contribution to make. But if you want a, your high street to be inclusive, don't make people set, sign in or download something. Let it be as easy to access as walking outside the front door. This is a local shop that joined us. They were up and running within 24 hours, 82% increase in uh, sales. And also they get people who browse it and then call them. And that's absolutely fine too, because we don't take commission on sales, our focus is very much about getting people to re-engage with their communities. So um, if this has fired you up, we are working across the UK. Um, we are uh, wanting to work with partners and uh, help what they do. Collaboration for positive impact is our mantra. There's no point reinventing the wheel. We have something that's very, very sophisticated and, um, and you know, well-designed and uh, always adapting. So we really welcome uh, opportunities to partner with places and other companies to get this out because what we want to do is bring convenience with a local conscience to the world. Thank you very much. And please follow us. <laughs> I'm used to speaking fast. <laughs> Pity the interpreter. <laughs> it's happiness, yeah. Another name that I'm particularly fond of is uh, shop.io, Shopio. And with that in mind, I wish to introduce Paul Sandham from Menter Moan, who runs uh, the uh, Kudigatan program. And Paul will talk about how this uh, has been developed, uh, how it works, and uh, a little more as well. Thank you, Paul. Um, Thank you very like, much. If you can see the screen. Yeah. OK, a uh, couple of things there. One, um, I, I, I work a lot with Mentor Mon, but I don't work um, for Mentor Mon. They'd, they'd probably run a mile. Um, and Cardigarten is, is a company that I'm one of the founders of. But we do, we do work very closely with Mentor Mon, Cunard Gwyneth um, on projects. Right. Um, right, well, I'm going to try and do a quick story and then a quick disastrous demo. So let's um, present. Right, so the story behind Shopio. Um, Shopio is um, Welsh for shopping. 
So it was quite convenient that um, that was a domain name branding exercise. The story starts um, in a place called Abadaron, which is a small community on the very end of the Thin Peninsula in Gwynedd. Um, there's a fantastic bakery and cafe there called Beko Sislin. And in other projects that I've worked on in the past, I would had developed a, a strong working relationship with this and some of the other businesses in, in the area. And I also have a very strong relationship with pastry um, and fine, fine baked goods. So, so it was, um, it, it was, it was definitely a, a, a relationship based on food. The story starts um, in March last year. Um, Wales, as the rest of the United Kingdom and Europe, um, basically shut down. And um, David from Mentermon, the MD of Mentermon, got in touch with me to say that um, could Astor's, could Cody Garden, or is there anything we could do to help um, this, this specific business? But there were a number of other businesses that had been in touch. They were dealing with having to process over 800 orders every week. Um, they were spending upwards of um, three and a half days, sometimes four days, just processing this because they were taking the orders on the phone, via SMS, on Facebook. They were having to process all the orders, basically via a till. And at the same time, they were there to bake bread. Um, and here's an example of some of the, the work that the owners were having to do. There were literally these till rolls were spread across tables. They were having to hand, manually put together pig lists. There was uh, um, a lot of um, issues that they were having to deal with. They were still trading and they were really happy that the customers were supporting them, but it was difficult. Um, so what um, they came to us with was, was, was that, that problem, could we help them? And of course, I think the answer that most people would come up with was e-commerce. Um, e-commerce lets you sell anything, pretty much, anywhere. It um, enables you to be able to get your orders fulfilled by third parties. It lets you support thousands of products and you can pay with credit cards, debit cards, PayPal, Kana, all sorts of methods. Um, but really what we saw was that the, the what, what, what Beko Sislin and other businesses, food businesses in Gwynedd were um, doing, well, they were selling locally. Um, the orders were um, being delivered, fulfilled by the business, or they were being collected by the customers. They didn't have tens of thousands of products. They had, they had hundreds of products at most. Um, and lots of their customers actually wanted to pay with cash. Um, in Plin Peninsula, Welsh is the first language. So by using a standard e-commerce platform, they were going to either get a, a sort of a half cut bilingual system, or, or no bilingualism at all. And most importantly, I think, was that the, the reason that these businesses, we've got to look at the fundamental problem here, which was uh, that the businesses weren't online. And the reason, the question we were raising was, was why were these um, businesses not online? Um, and the, the, the other bit there, because Mentor Mon had come in and people in Kangar Gwynedd was, there was, um, we saw the need for it to be a, a level above the actual suppliers, the businesses that were on the system. So um, now's the bit where um, I give you a demo to try and um, show you how uh, the system works. So you should all now be able to see this. Can you confirm you can see the site? Uh, yes, Paul. Yeah, you can, great. So um, again, we've done this, I think the technical phrase is asked about tits, sorry about that, but that's the way we've done it. We really have designed this for the suppliers of the, 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 the that are on the system. At this point, it was not designed for the customers. Um, and the reason why was because we said that, um, that the, um, the, the, the businesses weren't online, they, they weren't trading. So I'm gonna log on as a business. Um, so I've logged in as a business now. The system, as we've said, is fully bilingual, whether it's emails going out or reports that are printed. And this is what a business sees. So here's some orders I made up this morning. So this is the, the dashboard. And because our team has got over 25 years of e-commerce development experience for some of Britain's largest um, retailers, we... Um, we want to focus on the actual processes. So at the moment where the, the supplier has logged in, 
and they can see that they've got four orders to deliver that's come through today they've got one for collection they can create a pick list which means that instead of them having to pick individual orders they can go around the stores and pick 20 of one thing 13 of another five of another they can create their dash dispatch notes they can they can they can do everything from the dashboard but they can also go into the order dashboard and look in more detail so here's one of the orders that was put in today again like i said we can go into Kamrag to show the whole thing working in in the first language of the area and here's an order that's come through um the order has been um is a card payment i think um i've forgotten which one it was now payment yes it's payment by card um the payments succeeded and that's the total we can now mark that as picked. Um, that sends an email to the um, customer in the language of their choice to say whether the order is ready to collect or that it's um, ready for dispatch. We can also click as, as it's been dispatched. Again, this, this will send out that to the, um, to the actual customer. So yeah, that's us trying to say, this is how um, we wanted to support the back end process to make it easy for businesses that haven't gone online yet to, to get sell the system to them rather than to the customer. We've also spent a lot of time on how to make the, um, the system easy to set up. The target was can they set up in 20 minutes um, and 30 minutes if they were taking card payments. And to give you an example of how it works here, this is the, that business saying which postcode areas they deliver to and this then governs the way that business is presented back to the customer so if you live there this business will end up at the bottom of the list of suppliers because it doesn't deliver so you'd have to go all the way right down to there to get your orders um, fulfilled and here we've spent a, a fair bit of time over the last few weeks um, improving the uh, reporting capabilities of the system so yes it didn't fail um so if i now close this down um that was the uh the, the demo um one thing i did want to find out which should be through now is um yes as of um today the system's only been trading since um the end of november so it's six months now six and a half months We've got 36, 34 suppliers on the system, 29 trading. And as of today, the system is close to having turned over 72,000 pounds. And we're just short of 2,000 customers. And this is all with a minimum viable product. Where we want to go in the next six months is we're actually now focusing on the front end to the users, the customers. And so we're, we're pushing that out and we're giving suppliers better reporting techniques so that they can... Um, they can see how well they're doing and we're working on the concept of collection points which would be community resources where suppliers can can deliver and aggregate orders either for the public or for holiday cottage um, visitors etc so yes that's it thank you thanks paul that was really good um clearly it's growing and proving very successful so well done Apologies for suggesting that you actually work for Mentor Mall. I'm sure David would love to have you, though. I don't think so. <laughs> and uh, I am familiar with the bakery down in Abedaran and uh, sympathise fully with your affinity with uh, pastries. Yeah. I, I know they do a storm in any normal summer or season. So thanks very much indeed for that, Paul. Oh. We, we were now to move on to uh, a discussion by Avion, Avion Williams of Kellen. Uh, Kellen is a circular economy project and it's Wales's first complementary currency platform uh, based on some existing successful models uh, elsewhere in the world. Unfortunately, Avion is currently unwell and unable to be with us. So we will include uh, his slides, uh, the details and the information within the information padlet that will follow this event. So apologies that uh, Avion cannot be with us in person, 
and we wish him well and a speedy recovery. Which means that we have a little time available for uh, Q&As. And if anybody does have a question uh, uh, for any of our speakers, please would you be kind enough to um, enter them into the chat. And whilst that's all happening, um, I'm, I'm going to kick off with, uh, with a question to Maleri and Lucinda. Uh, Maleri, Lucinda, was it difficult to get as many local producers as you have to join the project when you started? No, it wasn't actually, uh, because fundamentally uh, the businesses came to us to try to establish this kind of setup. And I'll name some of those businesses. Uh, Boydmore Menai was one, Blasar Void and Cossin Cymru. Um, so without those, Cadernogwen would not have been established, so we are thankful to them, but it has grown. And you need to remember that uh, companies such as Blasco Lass is a platform for other sellers as well. So we have 22 companies featured on the platform. So Blasco Lass, Shop Ogwen, is selling on behalf of a number of other producers also. Excellent. Thank you very much. And one question as a follow-up to that then you've got over 20 local producers how far away are they what's the geographical proximity are they spread out or are they uh, relatively local i would say that they're all pretty much local we and that shows that we have such a wealth of companies here in the valley. We've got some, I'd say that possibly over 90% uh, are right in the heart of, of our valley. I mean, when I collect stock, it, it takes me usually no more than uh, five minutes to, to get to them. Uh, and that is also a part of the USP of the scheme when Lucinda sends food on a Thursday, it's more than just a delivery service because she speaks to some households where there are people who've been isolating throughout the whole of the pandemic. So it's a social service as much as anything else. And I always come back to this time and time again. It's not just a commercial sales platform. It's quite a holistic platform and an approach. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, and obviously uh, a valuable one. I'm fully aware of the value of it. Thank you both. Glenn has a question for Jackie. Uh, shall I ask it, Glenn? Yeah, happy for you to ask it, Mike. Yeah. Uh, does Shop Appy collect customers' data that the local businesses can then access? So um, Shop Appy, when uh, somebody buys from a high street, they can buy from multiple different businesses and then it goes to a checkout and then uh, emails are sent to the relevant businesses to confirm the transaction. So the businesses have the data for the transaction. GDPR won't let us use anything else. However, we have a very large customer base. You imagine because we've got thousands of businesses on. So uh, what we do is we do e-shots. So we do top picks. We, we go into areas and we've just uh, implemented an upgrade, which automates a lot of the workflows. So we're just rolling that out across the platform at the moment. And what that will do, we'll be customizing the experience for the for people browsing so they get tailored messages about the products they're interested in where they live and that kind of thing so yeah we don't gdpr restrictions are very tight and we've, we've always been very careful that we don't want people to feel that they're being uh, that their data isn't secure and uh, that was right from the outset i think the website developers when i spoke to them five years ago were saying to me no, make them sign up, make them do this. And I wouldn't do it uh, because I hate it when I'm a messaged and I haven't asked for this. So people sign up, the regular e-shots, products, you know, obviously link it to all the key retail uh, points. But we also have a very big community of businesses that we get to. They can, you know, ask the, the, the customer when they respond, would you like to sign up? Of course. And that would be a sensible thing to do. But um, it isn't, you know, for our purposes, we can't give the data away. Lovely. Thanks for that, Jackie. Before you go away, um, 
Dan, Dan has asked, uh, what is one piece of advice the panellists would give to someone starting a similar initiative somewhere else in Wales? And whilst you're there, Jackie, uh, you've already answered within chat, don't reinvent the wheel, use what exists, and don't underestimate the resource. Is there anything you want to add or elaborate on that? Well, Shop Happy's been going for five years, and it has been a hard journey. This is not easy. You're talking to different ind independents, different businesses that want to do their own thing as well as collaborate, and some that don't want to collaborate. And you need a significant resource. In terms of technology investment we've made and we continue to make because the site constantly evolves, it's hundreds of thousands of pounds um, to get the right development. So this, you know, a good technologist will always say, don't reinvent something if it already exists. You know, don't, and, and you know, the, the whole machinations of trying to manage stock, the portals, it was great seeing Paul's portal. Um, you know, it, it's about the access and the ease. And we, you know, when uh, Paul said he went about it supply first, that's exactly the way we went about it five years ago. You need to understand to build the supply side, you need to understand right under the skin of the businesses, what are the blockers? For us, there's also, you've got to understand that businesses don't want to be distribution warehouses. That's not why they're set up in the high street. So for us, it's always been, how can we use digital to facilitate interaction in person? Um, but that's a, that's a hard, it's a hard journey. And there's lots of, lots of sites have started during lockdown. We've already been approached by two uh, to acquire them because it isn't, it's very difficult to sustain this. So, you know, working together, collaboration is key. That's our philosophy. It's all about partnership, but do not try to start from scratch when so much is out there. What th Thanks, Jackie, wise words. Paul, can I throw this one at you now? Um, what, one piece of advice you would give to someone starting a similar initiative? Um, I think it's uh, trust is the first thing. That's one of the reasons why Cadwin Ogwen has been so successful. Um, you've got to have that in place. Uh, I think it's about offering a range so it, it's, you know, it, it, it becomes, in essence, a proxy for the, for the high street or for that community's producers. Um, I'd obviously have to say I disagree in that you don't start again, otherwise we'd never have any software. <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do do understand about the, the costs of running these things, but I think there are um, specific needs or skill sets or technologies that can be introduced that can only improve the offering um but um for us it's been uh, I, I, i'd 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 say don't use an e-commerce platform that's that's the the thing to go for so for for shop Happy, they've clearly they're clearly not an e-commerce platform there's something that's been designed from the ground up to be high street focused real world focused like like shopio has been as well um because that then helps those businesses and um and lets them let lets them them trade what we can what we what, what we aim for and anybody should be aiming for is to make it easier for the businesses um once they see the advantage once they see that they're saving time that they're the key things that we've bought out of this are that um the businesses are surprised by how many new customers they've acquired um they're shocked at the average order values so that they're looking at typically um between 15 and 20 percent uplifts on their average till in the shop um, transaction to online so so it, it, it's it's that it's it's find something that um, a technology platform that um, isn't an e-commerce platform that does support um, real world be can i collect this order from the shop um i don't want to pay with a card um blah 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 yeah, that's that that's that's what I'd say. Just to reinforce what Paul's just said there, and Paul is no no when you're a software developer, you've got all the advantages <laughs> that I didn't have um of having to commission it out. So uh, congrats on that. Um I, I'd say uh, one of the things that Paul says there around uh, average order value is really key because that's one thing we did notice during lockdown. So we had an example was a butcher, and the butcher was doing this amazing isolation pack of things. 
and through the store, people were calling and uh, the, the person was taking the order, writing it down manually, trying to take payment, people were messaging. It was a right mess. And he was his average order value at that point was 50 quid for a box. And then um, when, and no, I saw it's 20 or 30 quid for a box. But then when he went on to Shop Happy, we said, add uh, options for people to order other things. So when they've got the, they're on the sofa and they look and they, oh, actually, should we have a barbecue pack and should we have this? And actually then his average order doubled. So for him, you know, when you give people the time to really browse, particularly when people are spending less time in store, it's really important that you give them a really good browsing experience to capitalize on whether they go in person or they order online, they're going to order more if you give them more choice. That's lovely. Thank you, Paul. And uh, thanks again, Jackie, for rounding that off. Mel, I'm going to go to Bobby's daughter. Mel, you know what's coming. What would your word of advice be, your short word of advice for someone who's starting out in this area of work in uh, another area within Wales? You've got to make it easy for businesses and you've got to make it easy for customers and consumers. This project has succeeded here because of Lucinda's personality to an extent, because she hands holds those businesses uh, and makes it more than just um, an online technological thing. Uh, her personality does carry it and she does help with a lot of hand-holding and signposting. And I appreciate what Jackie and Paul do say, because obviously you need a slick system. But from my point of view, it's equally valuable to have someone such as Lewis who will send and deliver this product to customers because you're talking about reconnecting people with locally produced produce in communities you're reconnecting people with their community it's not just a shop i always come back to that Lucinda. also it is that you shouldn't worry too much about it and small producers uh, are some of the hardest working people working the longest hours within our communities they you've got to put faith in their produce and that they'd be able to keep going. Uh, you need to show their work, respect the work that they've been putting in for a number of years possibly. So it's about not feeling overly concerned and just go for it. Some wise words, thank you very much. Thank you both. I don't think we have any more questions within chat and time is, press is pressing us now. So I'm just going to ask my colleague, Elizabeth, uh, whether you want to have a very quick word with everyone about uh, the Padlet and how they can follow uh, yeah. this meeting to gather all the information. Yeah, sure. Um, I've put a link to the Padlet here in the chat. So have a look there and you can see the links to everybody's projects and businesses in there. Have a look, follow them. Please follow them on social media. They would love your support. And if you've got other initiatives that you know of, you may be working on something yourself, please send us a link and we'll pop it in there later on. And any other information or presentations that have, have been missed off or changed today. But I just wanted you to have that. And maybe we could, I just want to thank everyone for taking part. I know Mike will thank you as well. But if we just got one, could you all just give us one sentence and speakers about what your future plans are? That would be amazing. Expansion or whatever. <laughs> Who do you want to start? Go for it, Jackie. <laughs> oh, okay. um, well, I want to uh, continue to expand across the UK. I want I want every high street to have Shop Happy because I think that when people want travel, they want to take their values with them. So anything that's accessible that might help them spend local is a good thing. And if it's recognised, I just want there to be an alternative to Jeff Bezos and an anonymous warehouse somewhere. Mm, great. Thank you. Paul, what, what are your thoughts on the future? Um, the two things after the six month pilot, um, we've taken the feedback and we're, we're working on that now, which are things like um, improving the product data model. But the main things are collection points where people can um, leave orders and collect them outside of normal business hours. And the big one that we're designing is um, a bid um, for something to plug into Shopio that supports um, holiday cottages, uh, mm. being able to order local food produce and have it delivered for when they arrive. 
Sounds like a great idea. Um, Pathner of Argwen, what about Cadran Argwen? What's the future plans? Um, it's not to increase the number of uh, customers, to be honest. I think the priority for us will be to create more outlets. So the pop-up shop on the high street, um, taking Cadran Argwen to communities within the Argwen Valley, for instance, uh, going to the guy mountain food fair school fairs and so forth reconnecting people with local produce and essentially to continue to promote this project as it stands that's wonderful thank thank you all for that i'll leave mike to finish thank you thanks elizabeth uh the time is nigh thank you very much one and all for joining us and for contributing uh, and for being so happy to do so. It has been a brief morning, but I think that one that's been exceptionally valuable. Can I thank our speakers, our contributors, to each and every one of you for joining us and uh, to those of you who uh, brought forward some questions. I'd like to thank everyone. Uh, the product will be available. Elizabeth has confirmed uh, that the link will be shared and the session is recorded. So therefore, this will be available as part of it. And there we have it. Indeed. Have uh, a wonderful rest of Wednesday. Many thanks.